Hello, welcome to this virtual service of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Waynesboro. I'm Laura Riggin, a member of UUFW for about 10 years. In this week of Thanksgiving 2020, we come together again across our computer screens to acknowledge our place within the circle of all life. Our respect for life is the reason many of us are keeping our distances this week from the ones we want to be near. At a time of year when in the past we have gathered around a table, shared our gratitude, and feasted with friends and loved ones. It will be a tough week for many people as we do things differently yet again this year. But as Unitarian Universalists, we acknowledge ourselves to be in a relationship with each other and our community that is responsible, loving, and compassionate. This relationship to each other, it is who we are and what we do. It's why many of us come to this place, or lately this YouTube channel, each week. This week, from afar, may we honor the gifts that each of us brings to the table. Welcome. The flaming chalice is a symbol of our movement and our faith. As it is lighted, please hear these words. May the light we now kindle inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse, to serve you, Spirit of Freedom. This past week, 
we passed a milestone, a milestone we wish we had not needed to pass. A quarter of a million people have died in America from COVID-19. We all know the backstory. We all know that in the possible not too distant future, we will have vaccines to cut the growth and slow this so that we don't have to reach the next milestone. But today, where we are, we need to hold in our hearts a quarter of a million people. So I invite us into a time of quiet. Amen. Our words of prayer today are by Lynn Cox. Spirit of life and love, known by many names and yet fully known by none, we give thanks for this time of renewal. We give thanks for the ability to begin again after the disaster, after the tragedy, after the loss after meeting the challenge set before us. Grant us the courage to continue on the journey, the courage to speak up for the well-being of others and for ourselves and for the planet. May we forgive each other when our courage falls short and may we try again. Grant us hearts to love boldly to embody our faith and our values in living words and deeds. May our hearts open to embrace humility, grace, and reconciliation. Grant us the ability to learn and grow, to let the spirit of love and truth work its transformation upon us and within us. Grant us the spirit of hospitality, the willingness to sustain a fit dwelling place for the holy that resides in all being. Grant us a sense of being at peace in the world, even as we are in motion. Let us cultivate together the strength to welcome every kind of gift and all manner of ways to be on this journey together. On Sundays, as we gather, it is our custom to share our joys and sorrows, those things in our personal lives which are beyond the ordinary, beyond the everyday, to share what is most meaningful, most challenging, most amazing for us in our lives. This week, Kay Yost writes, due to increasing challenges with mobility, Grace Leary made the difficult decision last week to move into assisted living. Please keep Grace, her daughter Shingy Desiree, her niece Kay, and the rest of her family in your thoughts and in your prayers as they navigate this difficult move during a pandemic when no one is allowed to enter Grace's new living space. Let us hold this and all joys and sorrows unspoken this morning quietly in our hearts.
Bread by Richard Levin. Each night, in a space he'd make between waking and purpose, my grandfather donned his one suit in our still dark house and drove through Brooklyn's deserted streets following the trolley tracks to the bakery. There he changed into white linen work clothes and cap, and in the absence of women, his hands were both loving, well into dawn and throughout the day, kneading, rolling out, shaping each astonishing moment of yeasty predictability in that windowless world, lit by slightly swaying naked bulbs where the shadows staggered, woozy with the aromatic warmth of the work. Then, the suit and drive again. At our table, graced by a loaf that steamed when we sliced it, softened the butter, and leavened the very air we'd breathe, he'd count us blessed. Mm -hmm.
here below the sanctuary of the First Unitarian Church of Chicago is our church crypt. Here rest the remains of church members and neighborhood folks, ordinary people who lived ordinary lives, often through extraordinary times. They were like us, with hopes and fears and dreams and uncertainties. They were babies and elders, and they are here with us. When we meet in person, the architecture of the building makes visible a hidden reality that our feet are held up by the past as we walk into the future. On this Thanksgiving, we remember the past because we believe in the future. As a child, I was taught the Disney version of Thanksgiving. In a time of uncertainty, despair, and suffering, the colonizers were a people of gratitude and hope. And this is true and beautiful and incomplete. The real story of colonization and Thanksgiving reveals our nation at its best and its worst. Not just an aspiration to freedom from tyranny, but also theft, violence, and hate. Not only a wish to say we before I, but also a ruthlessly narrow definition of who we includes. In every generation forward from 1621, the colonizers living in the land that became this nation failed to adequately answer, who is this American freedom for? Who is my neighbor? Four centuries have carved a system of white supremacy into the lives of this continent. You know the history the ethnic cleansing and genocide of Native peoples, a national constitution founded on race slavery, immigrants right now, in this hour, imprisoned in concentration camps on our southern border. We are, each of us, ordinary people living ordinary lives, through an extraordinary time and with extraordinary faith. We remember the whole and difficult past. We remember this complicated present. We name it because we believe in the future. Living on the threshold between ancestors and generations still to come, we are the inheritors of our liberty, hard-fought freedoms, a people of gratitude. And hope. Like you, we are a people committed to winning freedoms our own ancestors could not make real or could not even see as necessary. A people who believe that the faith we profess must be made real in the shape of our living together. I'm grateful for the sun shines. I'm grateful for the rain. And when life's bumps and life's bruises come, I'm grateful all the same. So just knowing I am a lonely soul, hand in hand. I may hear I'm grateful for 
songs that seem to flow through my mind like a river chasing the moon so just knowing I am a lonely soul hand in hand with a world full of lonely souls brings peace and love to my beating heart and faith I'm grateful for a smiling face I'm grateful to see you today I'm grateful for nature around us all And for feeling each joy and each pain Somehow knowing we are all only souls Hand in hand with every soul brings peace and love to each beating heart and faith blooms in us again and what is this faith that I'm speaking of it isn't in some old bearded man up above it's music and poetry beauty and love in all of everywhere it's music and poetry beauty and love in all of us Over the last few days, I've been reading a collection of Christian sermons titled Preaching in Hitler's Shadow, Sermons of Resistance in the Third Reich. One sermon that particularly captured my attention because of when I was reading it was a sermon about giving thanks in the Third Reich by Paul Schneider. He had been arrested by the Gestapo in 1937 for his preaching critical of Nazism. On his release, he was ordered not to preach, but he preached anyway. He was arrested again and placed in a sort of internal exile, no longer allowed to be in the same area as his congregation. He refused and preached anyway. He was arrested again, and in confinement, surreptitiously wrote the sermon that I read in this particular collection of sermons. He managed to have it smuggled out of the prison, and his wife then copied it and delivered copies to each member of his two congregations. Finally, he was sent to the Buchenwald concentration camp, where he was killed. And this was the minister who was preaching on giving thanks. The occasion for this sermon was Antedanktag, the traditional harvest Thanksgiving festival in Germany. We may think of Thanksgiving often as a specifically American holiday, but other nations and cultures also have ways and holidays for celebrating the harvest and expressing their gratitude. Antedanktag falls on the first Sunday of October, so Schneider's sermon was for October 3rd, 1937. His theology is, of course, specifically Christian and of its time, not one that would easily simply be read into our time and our services, but it is moving that this arrestee in prison, being tortured hours on end, nonetheless found something with which to encourage his flock to be grateful. He focuses 
from the beginning of the sermon on two little words in the Psalms rather than on any grand narrative. He focuses on the capitalized words that in English have often been rendered, at least until the late 20th century, as thou and thee, referring to an idealized, personalized view of the divine. He quotes from scripture, so long as the earth stands shall not cease sowing and harvest, frost and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Then he continues in his words, let us never rob God of this honor by running to hide behind natural laws or natural power or behind laws and forces like blood and soil in order to flee this great and to us so fatherly, so warmly and so intimately in his gifts. You will recognize the words blood and soil from the alt-right neo-Nazi demonstration in Charlottesville that ended with the vehicular killing of Heather Heyer and the injury of several more. All of those phrases Schneider used in this part of his sermon were directly and transparently pointing for his parishioners to the evil policies, the evil philosophy of Nazism. With these words that directly critique an evil ruling party, he uses the traditional language concerning God to teach his congregation that evil governance is not just bad for people, but runs contrary to their deepest held religious values. His second little word to focus on is the word all, which delineates whom the goodness is for that is understood through the word God. All eyes await thee, thou fillest all living things with delight. This includes the creatures that do not have their ability to reason, that in their animal instinct, as we put it, see their food and await God's gifts. From our perspective as people well versed in aspects of contemporary science, we may find the supernaturalism of such words challenging, or perhaps some even find them offensive, but taken as Schneider preached them, they were not a denial of science, but a statement of value and worth. Schneider implicitly compares Hitler and the Nazis to Belshazzar, an evil king of ancient Babylon, and to his Menions. He tells the story by quoting from a poem written by the Jewish poet Heinrich Heine, in which Belshazzar is killed by his servants. This was dangerous and provocative preaching. Dangerous because he was using forbidden writings by a forbidden people. Dangerous because he was criticizing Hitler criticizing the Führer, the ruler. He wasn't concerned about losing his tax-exempt status. He was already in prison and about to die when he was preaching about political and cultural evils to his parishioners. Gratitude for the goodness of life itself and the gifts of the wherewithal to flourish despite horrifying conditions was, for Schneider and his parishioners, not separate from facing the world and its evils with open eyes, committed to justice, the highest of divine virtues. Now, it is, of course, too easy to compare bad leaders and bad governance to Hitler and the Nazis. It is generally a comparison to avoid. 
But while I am not being carted off to prison for my sermons, there is no question that much of the bad governance led by the egotistical character of our soon to be late president has been contrary to our values as Unitarian Universalists and as decent human beings. Our challenge is to be grateful while living with our eyes open to negative realities near and far. How much trouble will President Trump cause on his way out the White House door to be determined? How will the flow of information and planning and the transition from the Trump administration to the Biden administration serve the well-being of the people and the equal protection of life in this country to be determined? What will we be called on to do to express our values for the good of our nation and the world in the coming weeks and months? to be determined, yet we are called on to be grateful today and each day, not because we have everything we need or because everything is right and good, but paradoxically, because it is not. We have experienced bad government. We have experienced bad leadership. We have observed a resurgence of hate and explicit unashamed racism and sexism and transphobia and more arise, hopefully a last gasp, but a rise of neo-Nazism, the Ku Klux Klan, the alt-right of QAnon and more. We are not grateful for the evil, but for the human capacity for change and improvement no matter how long it takes. We have inherited systems of oppression and participated in them in various ways. But we also inherit a system that, if we will rescue it, has the capacity of growing toward greater justice, even if sometimes only at the speed of church. We gather virtually today surrounded by the reality of misgovernance that has resulted in 250,000, a quarter of a million who have died because of the policy and disarray that made one of the most scientifically advanced nations easy pluckings for this disease. We can be grateful for the developing treatments and vaccines that we trust eventually and hopefully soon to bring us out on the other side of this deadly and horrific experience of loss and danger and isolation. But our gratitude cannot be a mindless response. It must be linked to our commitment to change what we can for the growth of justice and the well-being of all, and the wisdom to know the difference between fights that can be won today and those that have to be planned strategically over years and over generations. Let us then be grateful and effusively so. So many of us have so much relative ease in life, even when we face significant challenges. But let us also recommit to justice and a world built on love. Amen and blessed be.
You're my life, you're my breath, you're a smile, you're my guest, you're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love. You're my hand, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're a hug, you're the light in the dark, you're the spark, you are fun. You're my mom, you are water, you're the stars, you're my daughter, you're my friend till the end, you're my dreams, you're my father. You're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround, I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere in the clouds. You're my pain, you're my sorrow, you're my hope for tomorrow, you're the strength when I'm hollow, you're the path that I follow. You're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that all that I am, all that I see, all that I've been, and all that I'll ever be is a blessing. It's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all, for it all. Stop to take a bow and keep moving forward and start looking towards your heart. It'll open all the doors and only then you'll start to hear the world singing chorus with your mind and heart. Align and purpose, everything all will feel gorgeous. Sit and pray cause what I have Is more than I deserve or could ever imagine How do I give back to All of this magic and spread the love So everybody can have it Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor If I got a family or if I'm all alone Bad things happen I can just Complain and moan but there's a million things That I can be grateful for The small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that everything is a gift. All that I am All that I see All that I've been All that I've been